We're back once again talking about federations. That's right, it's been a while since we touched on this particular subject, but today we're going to dive right in because we've had a QA and a on, uh, online. And we're going to go and see what the devs have to say. First off, we're going to be talking about subjects. Now, subjects obviously is one of those things that a lot of people are interested in because right now they don't do all that much and it's usually better just to integrate them. Now, of course, with federations, subjects are going to be a bit more powerful, a bit more useful, but how does this actually impact uh, the whole situation? So, for instance, are subjects forced to join some federation types if you ask them to? Well, this completely depends on the type of federation that is going to be available to you. Every federation is completely modular. There's rules that can be set by the founding fathers, so to speak, of said federation, and it's really up to them to say, hey, you can join in with your vassals uh, or not. Sometimes you're going to need to leave them behind. Sometimes you come then bring, otherwise they be maybe they become full, fully fledged members. Which brings me to point number two. Can you start a federation with your subjects? And this is something that I thought about quite a lot because, well, the Trade League on paper is incredibly powerful, merging all the economic systems together. You need to be in Megacorp to be able to start one of these. But why wouldn't you just start a planet somewhere, release it, and then after 10 years become a federation with it? It makes perfect sense because then you can get very early access to some of those really, really powerful systems, maybe like a backstop, so to speak, for you to um, form a federation and get those bonuses really early on and play super tall. That's something that really fascinates me. It's an interesting strategy, and I am kind of curious on how this is going to work. Now, we already kind of touched upon federation laws. Now, the real question is, will there be any tools, laws, to shift combat ethics within the Federation? Uh, there is no or there is no way of changing other species' uh, ethics within a Federation. There is no drifting or anything like that. It basically is designed to make sure that there is as much difference between the Federation members as possible, as long as they are, of course, joining the Federation in time. And it really means that you need to be very selective of who you're going to be allowing in your Federation. And maybe even use those ideology wars to flip another empire to your ethics and then get them to join a Federation. I think that would be a much better strategy because the lower cohesion you have, which is one of the new systems in terms of ethics, uh, the less impact your laws are going to have, which is, of course, something important. There's going to be a serious penalty here. Uh, the more, the less cohesion you have, the more uh, en envoys you can assign, which is important. And envoys, of course, are something that you can uh, assign to another species to improve your relationship with them. Uh, so things like member policies. Uh, can we get uh, ally uh, uh, federations to change member policies such as full citizenship throughout empires there's no way of influencing laws of other empires similar to ethics there's no system there but it's open for modding so it's totally possible so how many laws are there well there's 14 categories of law with two to five each so somewhere around 70 different available laws uh, that you can start depending on your ethics type of federation etc etc so there's actually quite a lot of things going on here um there is a whole bunch of other things here um laws like secession type uh, federations economy technology diplomatic weight all of those items are actually being addressed by federation laws which is rather interesting i particularly like the challenge types which basically means that uh, hey who is going to be the leader of this federation so can you maybe buy yourself into becoming the head of the federation can you go for a personal fight a duel so to speak these are all uh, up, uh, things that are um, available sadly you cannot be be the leader of the federation if you are the weakest uh, which would be a very interesting idea it's uh basically similar to the uh crown law in crusader kings where the youngest person in a uh, hierarchy would become the leader uh, that doesn't uh, uh, that doesn't exist but again it can easily be added in if necessary if the demand is high enough uh things like one nation one vote are we going to see uh federations merging into one 
whole big empire? No, that system is currently not in effect. So that's uh, that's that's uh, kind of interesting. You will not be able to merge a federation into one giant super state. Uh, the members of the federation will always be working together uh, as a group and uh, kind of like uh, say the European Union in that sense. There's overarching laws, but the member states still have their own uh, individual sets of how they deal with their own internal policies. Now, we don't really have much of an internal policy system except for the core policies, and uh, we'll dive into that uh, probably later on. Will the Federation setting uh, be there if, uh, if all members of a defensive pact? Um, federations will always go the war the getter. So if one empire gets attacked, they will apply uh, the war will go down on the entire federation. So it's like a NATO style thing, and uh, yeah, that, that's basically uh, there. Now there's also centralization. We touched upon this earlier in other Death Diaries, of course. Uh, the higher the centralization, the more fleet power, for instance, you have the higher, stronger federation bonuses you can unlock. But it will also again have a negative impact impact on cohesion and that cohesion obviously uh means that you can get higher levels within the federation so it becomes a balance and you need to then apply more envoys to improve that federation cohesion now leaving laws behind us everybody's always like hey Federations are cool. How do I get the big guns though? Well, let's talk a little bit about the Federation fleet. First of all, I know the question in the back of your head, does the Federation get its own juggernaut? Yes, Federations get a own juggernaut. They are a supra-nationalist uh, organization. They get their own fleet, which includes a juggernaut. So hypothetically, if you're the leader of a Federation and you also control the fleet, you can hypothetically field two juggernauts, which I think is rather Cool. Uh, in terms of fleet capacity, right now, federations are capped at 500. That is going to change based on fleet contribution laws, which, again, is something that is modular within the federation framework, and you can change up and down. So, yeah, the higher the fleet contribution, the larger the maximum size. Of course, uh, hegemonies will have higher fleet contributions. It really depends on the type of federation that you're running to see which of the laws you can implement. Um when it comes to who gets to control the fleet or delegate the fleet, um, there is really no systems in place for it at the moment. Currently, the leader of the Federation gets control of it. There is no war leader or a species that is specifically uh, set up as, uh, hey, you guys get huge bonuses to warfare or something like that. You guys get to control the fleet whilst we're in war. That doesn't really exist, sadly. So moving on, we're going to go to talk about Federation types. We also have such wonderful things like Gestalt Empires with Instellars. And in the past, they've been kind of left out from things. Spiritualists usually don't like them, etc., etc., etc. But they will be able to start their own federations. For instance, the Hegemony can uh, be started by a rogue servitor, which is uh, interesting. It's, uh, it's an interesting setup right there. Uh, considering they don't get access to the Prosperity Tree, they cannot start a trade league, which is something you want to keep in in mind uh is it possible to change the type of federation as the game moves on yes you will totally uh be able to change your federation type but you will lose all progress in the current federation so all your laws will be reset etc 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 so that is uh definitely there you kind of want to you kind of want to fiddle around with this sort of thing because building up a federation takes a long long time People have been asking, uh, why are there no spiritualist federations? It's, it's very easy. There is no religious system within the game, aside from the fact that some species can be, in fact, spiritualists. So, uh, right now, there is no spiritualist hegemony available within the game, which I think is uh, a real shame. Maybe in the future, we will see something along the lines of uh, a religion system being introduced within the game, so we can actually have uh, religious federations. And that would be really cool. I, I really want to see this sort of thing, because uh, it's uh, it, it really spices things up. I don't think it's going to be a core mechanic, or really something that uh, defines the game, like a full-on expansion. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a religious expansion sooner or later, but right now we just don't have any of that sort of thing in mind. Uh, in the Federation or Hegemon start, will you be able to make the empires in your Federation and the Empire creation kind of similar to um, the syncretic evolution system works? No, um, the, uh, they are randomly generated, so you can't just min-max that. That would be incredibly overpowered. 
Uh, but yeah, so it's nothing like that that we've seen in Syncratic Evolu uh, Evolution, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah. Uh, will federations have unique leader requirements? Uh, the, there are federation laws that determine how the president is chosen. We've already talked about this. So, but yeah, there is no particular traits that are required for um, for em uh, empire leaders or federation leaders, which I think is a shame. It's a big opportunity there that is uh, sadly a little bit squandered, but what can one do? I think this was mentioned before, maybe PDX on the hegemonies can force members through war goals. Uh, yes, the hegemony can get a war goal to force other members into their federation. Basically, it's an upgrade from the vassal system in that regard, which I think is, is, is rather interesting. Then there's fallen empires. In some very rare cases, fallen empires can join federations, but if they wake up, you're in trouble because they will try to take control of it, which could be good or bad, depending on the type of federation it is or what kind of fallen empire it is. If it's a technologically advanced fall, well, they're all technologically advanced, but if it's a... Uh, if it's a happy fallen empire, they'll probably like you a lot more than, say, the militarist uh, isolationists, but that's a, a whole different discussion altogether. Uh, federations will go to war uh, during the war in heaven, which I, saw, I personally also asked about at PDXCon. The leader of the strongest federation will now get the first chance to turn their federation into the League of Non-Aligned Powers, and I guess then the other federations can join if they want to as a single uh, force. During the crisis, is it possible to invite the Guardian Fallen Empire from the Federation uh, and how they will interact with the Federation? It's very similar. Once again, they can join. This is the case of how they will join and how they will react. Um, then it comes to breaking federations. How will one play against federation? The focus of federations is mostly on corporation. There are no new mechanics for subterfuge in that in any sort of manner. So yeah, there is no spy system. That's something that the devs have talked about in the past uh, to break up or do any sort of political intrigue. So there's nothing like that in there. Uh, maybe in the future we will see. Still something that is uh, interesting. Uh, is it possible to influence and pull federation members out of a federation without using a warfare? Yeah, again, uh, there's no way of uh, doing things, but you could potentially do stuff through the galactic community, which is uh, part of a different video that uh, we are going to be talking about in the very near future. Uh, can I overthrow the whole federation government and use it to expand my territory? Sounds like you successfully changed the federation type from a galactic union into a hegemony. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so if you overthrow a federation and destroy it, you become their hegemon. And you then are the senate. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, you can't merge federations, so once you start a federation, you can't merge them. Uh, which is kind of cool, so... Uh, it makes perfect sense uh, when you're not the leader of a federation, but just a member. What kind of gameplay would you provide besides just following uh, the leader? You are still able to propose changes to federation law, assign envoys. Yeah, so basically you can still ask for laws to be changed. It's just a case of where is it going to be in the priority list and so on and so on. Oh, this is an interesting one. Will criminal syndicates be able to create trade leagues? If so, does it mean that a restriction on commercial pacts will also be stripped? Commer uh, criminal, syn criminal syndicates will be able to join and form federations, including trade leagues. They retain, retain their current restrictions on commercial pacts, and there are no mechanics preventing them from tormenting other federation members or suffering the consequences. Oh boy, I'm so gonna play as the Ferengi. It's gonna be awesome. That's, that's some good stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave the link to this particular depth diary in the description uh, below. Feel free to go and check that out. There's a bunch more interesting questions available in the actual list. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to Federation Q&A so far. It took a little while to get this video done. I needed to get the right inspiration going to get it all done and uh, put, put myself in the right mindset, of course, as well. When this Federation comes out, we do not know. And it's still up on the horizon. I want to thank all the people that are supporting the channel through the Patreon. Uh, if you want to try to get involved in that, make sure you click the link below. I'm always uh, looking forward to bring new people in. And of course, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you see here, we're going to be talking next time about the galactic community. And then, of course, the joy that is Origins as well thank you so much for watching and until next time take good care of yourselves and as always become the hegemon become the senate now